Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker. Today I'm going to talk about downswings and how to deal with them in a good way and how to deal with negative variants. I recently got a question on Discord from a player I know. I'll read through what he wrote and, and give you guys kind of my response. It has been a month-long stretch where I've been running into the top of opponent's ranges. In addition, every flip, all-in situation will go opponent's way and I'm currently 15 bands below EV. Because of the downswing, I studied even harder and did more drills, but then it doesn't seem to bring the situation better. However, it does feel like I'm getting better as a poker player. In addition, I feel like my play has gotten a lot worse as I feel like I'm playing a lot more passively in fear of being outdrawn or having to fold when I've committed a lot of money. It is incredibly discouraging and making me question why I even play since it seems like I will be forever stuck at 100 NL. Here he says, you know, I was at 200 NL, then I had to drop down, and I'm thinking of even dropping down back to 50 NL. I have a job outside of poker, so the limited time I spend playing seems so useless. I read Mental Game of Poker, and all the types of tilt are just starting to apply, but I can't find a strategy that works well. I just wanted to understand what strategies got you out of your tilt mental game. You briefly mentioned journaling, but wanted, but I wanted to understand what did you talk about, etc. Also, during a session, how would you gauge, gauge, not good at, at pronouncing these words, a successful session? And then he says, haha, a bit of an essay, thank you so much. Also, your upswing course is so good, well worth it. I want to skip around since there are certain issues that I want to tackle, but I'm being patient and going through the course sequentially. Okay, so uh, how do we tackle downswings? And I'll kind of give you guys some background. I think of a downswing as very often something that makes or breaks a poker player. And I've had friends who've gone through very, very severe downswings, including running over 100 buy-ins under EV over the course of a year. Or, you know, mixing stakes and running, you know, 40 binds over EV at the low stake and 40 binds under at the high stake so that you have a, an incredible win rate but don't win any money. I've known people go through a bunch of things and very often negative variance will make someone quit poker. So it's definitely a thing. And I've even heard professional poker players say, you know, part of the reason they were successful is that they didn't encounter a big downswing until they were already confident enough in their game and had made enough money that they had the strength to handle it. Because very often, if you're just starting out and you get the, the downswing relatively at the beginning, you're, you just think, you know, poker is not for me. I, I don't know what to do to win. And, and you just leave. Kind of the way I want you to think about downswings and variance is to understand a bit how our mind works. And our mind is used to looking for patterns and stories. That's how, how we deal with reality. And there's a, a method, maybe you guys learned it. We, we learned it in, in like a high school math called induction, where you have a small number of examples and, and you generalize some kind of rule from these, these small number of examples. So you take, say, five examples and then you generalize to everything. So an example of how the brain does this uh, is you might see a bird that's blue and another one that's blue and another one that's blue and another one that's blue. You might think all the birds in the world are blue. That would be an example of using induction, not necessarily in the best way, but you know, we use it to like the sun is going to rise every morning, set every evening. And the brain's just wired this way. It's a very effective evolutionary method to deal with a complex reality. That this is the way we're wired. Now, when variance and statistics meet induction, kind of funny things happen. And in, in poker, I like to call this the circle of death. So what happens is you start running into negative variance. And negative variance is not just all in EV. Well, not just running under EV, even though that, that has an effect. But it could be your draws missing. It could be your bluff catchers running into value hands. It can be your bluffs getting called. All of these are forms of variance because whenever we're bluffing, we're up against a range. 
It's going to work sometimes and not work sometimes. Once you start running into negative variants, your brain starts constructing a story. And this story affects your emotions, and then it affects your interpretation of reality, and then it affects your actions. So something that might happen is uh, imagine that you're a 4 BB per 100 winner. And you start, you know, whenever you 3-bet bluff, you get 4-bet. Whenever you stack off, you run kings into aces or queens into kings. You know, whenever you triple barrel, you get called. Your draws miss, uh, your sets get outdrawn on. Like all these things are happening a disproportionate amount of the time. And your brain starts drawing conclusions about reality. And it's saying, you know, like you shouldn't be stacking off. The guy just has aces all the time. Or, you know, you should be fast playing all your sets because the draw is going to hit. And maybe it's saying you should pot control your draws because you're going to miss anyway and then just have bad blockers on the river. There's no point, you know, betting the turn. And maybe you should give up on your bluffs because the last five river all-ins you got called. So bluffing just isn't something that works anymore. So your brain could be thinking all these thoughts. And what happens is that these habits start creeping into your game. Like the person who messaged me was saying, he starts to play more passively. It can be passively in some spots and aggressively in other spots. But the main issue is that he's letting his emotions dictate his decisions and his kind of variance-ridden interpretation of reality, which is an emotional interpretation in, in many cases. It's letting this guide his decisions rather than what's going to make me the most money based on uh, logic and ranges and everything I've studied in, in your course uh, and, and all these kinds of things. This is often something that's very hard to escape because as you start playing worse, your win rate starts dropping. And as your win rate starts dropping, you start losing more. And as you start losing more, you start playing even worse. And very often, a lot of things that you were doing well, you'll actually stop doing them. And, and it, it's this vicious circle where you actually become a worse and worse player over time. You start feeling helpless. There's nothing you can do. Suddenly, you drop to 100 NL. You drop to 50 NL. You can't even beat 50 NL. You have no clue what's going on. Like, you try fighting this, and it's like, you know, trying to swim through quicksand or something. Like, you just keep sinking. So, how do we escape this? If you want the most efficient way to escape this and you have a lot of money, hire a mental game coach. I've personally worked with Jared Tendler. He's helped me a lot. I know there are a bunch of other guys out there who I'm sure are good. But if, if we're not going down that route, I'll give you guys the advice I generally give to students. The idea here is that what's happening is too much for you, right? So we need to lower the intensity of what's happening and create an easier environment in which you have a better chance to recover and a lower chance of injury. So really think of this as kind of a sports injury, like this type of downswing creates mental injury. So you're, imagine you're a basketball player, you injured your, your leg. You don't, a lot of poker players instinctively, because they're down, they'll just keep playing and playing and playing more hours and more hours. And then the leg just gets more and more injured and there is no way out. You have to let the leg recover. So first thing I do is take some time off. It can be two days, it can be a week, it can be two weeks, but just take, take some small amount of time off poker. Let your emotional state recover a bit. Get some calm back, get in touch with the rest of your life. You know, we all need vacations from what we do. When you come back, the idea would be to erase from your head like you're not down 10k, you don't need to dig out of the hole, you don't need to win the next session, like there is no relation between having a positive win rate and winning the next session. And very often the person in a downswing is really looking for some confidence, so it's really important for him to win the next session, which is bad, that that's not where your focus should be. So I'd say temporarily move down in stakes just because lower stakes are easier to gain confidence in. You're going to have a higher win rate and losses are going to hurt less. I'd say play shorter sessions with longer breaks and make the breaks such that they let your mind recover. So you can take a nap, 
you can take a walk, but something that's actually restful. Don't study with pill solver during your break. You can maybe go over a few hand histories after the session is done and then take a break and start getting into, into the habit of, you know, limit the length of your sessions, review the hands after, take a break after, kind of take it easy. P poker is, you know, you're, you're in this for the long run. You're not here to play NL50 or NL100 or NL200 for the rest of your life. Everyone goes through this. Take it easy. Let yourself recover. You want a low pressure environment. Something that often helps me is to narrate and record while I'm playing, explaining every action that I make as though I were in a coaching session. And this often forces me kind of both to play in a more reasonable way, but also to kind of say out loud, like when you want to check back your draw because you know it's going to miss, that's a tough thing to say out loud. So what you might often say is like, I know this hand is supposed to bet here, but I'm scared. <laughs> and once you can say that, it, it helps you to get over it and to move past it and to make the correct decision. So I think narrating really helps to kind of move the emotions along so you're more in a place of recovery. Get your friends to, to study with you, to review hands with you as much as you can. All of these things in my eyes should help. And, and really what we want to do is take you out of the downward spiral and into an upward spiral. So we're just, I'm just kind of throwing everything I have at, at this. You could sometimes succeed with less. Some people will need more. But really what we want is that from day to day, you feel less tilted. It's not about what stakes you're playing. It's not about how much money you're making. And it's not about how much poker theory you know. When you're in this downward spiral, the main goal is to get your emotional state to one where you're making reasonable poker decisions and kind of m making them for the right reasons. Not looking to win every session not getting super frustrated when you lose an all-in. We're looking to lower our emotions with regards to our results. And there are a bunch of things that can help us to do this. Maybe guys in the chat have, uh, or guys watching, I mean, have more ideas, things that have helped you guys or have helped friends. If any mental game guys are watching, I'm sure like you guys have the best advice. Uh, a lot of the things I'm saying are things that I've learned along the way some with the help of friends, some on my own, and some with the help of Jared. Especially taking breaks and, and making shorter sessions is, is a big thing that Jared really helped me with. Journaling is also something that helps. Again, just to reduce the, the amount of accumulated emotion that you have around what's going on. Journaling kind of lets you let some steam off, which is always a good thing. I don't know you enough to be a guide, but given that the downswing started with you running 15 buy-ins on the EV, I would just journal for a while about running under EV and running over EV and how that's connected to how you feel, how you think it, it affects how you feel, should it affect how you feel, what's the meaning in the grand scheme of things, and just spend a few minutes journaling about that every day. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope this helps my friend who asked this question and anyone else. And see you guys next time.